The following program is rated U for universal audiences and is considered suitable for listeners of all ages. This is a presentation of Dream Realm Enterprises, where dreams are our reality. Welcome back to Q Who. This is episode uh, 20 of season 2. And uh, today I'm going to take a quick look at the audiobook for The Myth Makers, which I recently listened to. It's during my listen through of all of the uh, Target novelizations on audiobook CD. And uh, I have to say, I really, really enjoyed The Myth Makers. I thought it was a solid outing for this range. Um, when I originally looked at it, when I, when I got it and saw that uh, Stephen Thorne was going to be the reader, I kind of had my doubts because, of course, if you recall, he played Omega in The Three Doctors. Uh, he had played... Um, uh, in The Demons, and he's been in several Doctor Who's over the years. And he's got this big booming voice in those shows, playing those characters. So, I, and he, for, so for this one, for the novelization, what they, what Donald Cotton did, the way he wrote it, was all from Homer's perspective. Basically, Homer telling the story of what happens in Troy, the uh, with the Trojan War. And uh, so I kind of wondered, Stephen Thorne, is he the right person t to basically play Homer? <laughs> but uh, upon listening to it, you know, he doesn't use that big booming sort of voice for this. It's not an over-the-top kind of thing. And he does an excellent job um, with the reading portraying Homer. So it's quite interesting, actually. It's quite interesting. And, and I remember reading the book back in the 80s when it first came out, and, and really enjoying it and enjoying the way that they did it. Um, what Donald Cotton did, like I said, was a, it was sort of from Homer's point of view. So um, it's a, <laughs> some of it's a little stretch of, of, of the imagination because, you, you know, Homer kind of gets, somehow he gets to come and go between... Um, Troy and the uh, the Greek encampment and so forth. So it's all from his point of view, completely, so, um, which is interesting uh, because obviously in the televised episodes, you know, Homer's not in there. He's mentioned, but he's not <laughs> he's not actually in the show, and it's all from you know the point of view of the viewer. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see how they. How Donald Cotton wrote it so that Homer could be involved in all these these events. Um, <laughs> so it's quite interesting, and and of course that means not not every single thing that appeared on screen uh, gets portrayed in the novelization because again it's from Homer's point of view, um, which is interesting. I, that's very interesting. Um, it it kind of only lets it down towards the end where you don't really get. You know, he never goes inside the TARDIS, so therefore he doesn't see the farewell between Vicky and the Doctor. But as I recall, we really didn't get that anyway in the televised episode. Um, so, uh, it, you know, it wasn't fully realized there either. It was kind of a fairly quick out for Vicky at the end of the story. So spoilers, if you didn't already <laughs> know, Vicky leaves in this story um, because Maureen O'Brien's contract was not renewed after this initial four episodes. And this was actually the first uh, story recorded for season three, even though Galaxy 4 and Mission to the Unknown came first in season three. But that was those two stories were recorded at the end of season two while Verity Lambert was still there and handing things over to John Wiles. Uh, John Wiles chose not to renew Maureen O'Brien's um, contract for 
one reason or another. There's there's different stories on that. One that I had originally heard was that she had kind of mentioned that she was probably going to leave soon, but didn't give the you know didn't say I want to leave now. But between seasons, they decided they would just write her out at the end of the next. That's they decided they would write her out at the end of the next four part story, which of course ended up being the Myth Makers. But uh, at any rate, um, whatever really happened there behind the scenes, we may never know for sure, but there are various stories out there. Yeah, the, as far as the uh, the audiobook is concerned, it's, it's a really good production. Uh, I really enjoyed the reading that Stephen Thorne gave. He was fantastic as Homer. And uh, it was, uh, it's, a, it's really a fascinating way to do a novelization. And I thought so when I originally read it, I thought as well, this is quite an interesting take on it because it's not like a typical uh, adaptation of one of the televised stories to, you know, to novelizing it. Um, it. It was definitely done very differently. And, you know, that's a breath of fresh air, really. And it's made this one one of my absolute favorite uh, novelizations upon hearing it. When I originally read it, it was, you know, it was one of my favorites as well. I really enjoyed how it was handled. And now, um, <laughs> listening to it, after all this time, 30, 30 plus years later, uh, yeah, I really, I really love the way Donald Cotton did it. Um, it, it really, it's one of the, it's one of the easier ones to get through as well. It's one of the easier listens because it's, you know, it, it's just written so well and it's done so interestingly. The characters really come to life and the story comes to life being told in this way. Um, so, and Stephen Thorne was really fantastic. I, they couldn't have gotten a better reader, I don't think. <laughs> um, I thought he was an odd choice when I found out he was the one reading it, but upon hearing it, yeah, I was completely enthralled and I enjoyed every second of it. So, I would highly recommend listening to the audiobook of The Myth Makers. It's still out there somewhere. I'm sure you can find it on eBay or Amazon if you want the CD, or you can certainly um, grab the digital download of it if, if, you, if you're more inclined that way. But, of course, I prefer my physical media, and, and I'm happy to be able to put it on the shelf next to the actual book. So, uh, yeah, I don't regret it for a second. It, it, it is a terrific novelization, and I highly recommend it. And I can easily give it four and a half Tardises out of five because it's a really fantastic book and it's right up there marco polo has always been my favorite of the novelizations but i think this one is just neck and neck uh, um it's certainly my second favorite novelization but i think it's probably my favorite reading of all of them i think uh stephen thorne really quickly won me over and, and i just loved his performance as homer so uh yes i highly highly recommend this it's, it's a terrific book all right, next time I will be reviewing the new documentary about the TV movie that's coming out. It's recently come out, actually. It was released in the UK on Blu-ray. It hasn't been released in America yet, and we don't have a release date yet. But I did pre-order the UK version. It's in the mail and should be here any day now. It's called Doctor Who Am I? And it's all about the making of the TV movie, so I can't wait to, to see it and review it for you guys and that will be what's next on the docket and uh season two of doctor who and this has just been is, is about to be released as of this recording anyway perhaps by the time you hear this recording it will have been released in the uk many fans have already uh, gotten it a little bit early as i understand the blu-ray uh collector's box of season two featuring william hartnell um that's come out and i'll be reviewing that because i pre-ordered the uk version and it should be here in the next or so and i look forward to looking over that it's my favorite season of doctor who and i really really look forward to going through the blu-rays and i will do that thoroughly and then review that for you and that will probably be the season finale of this show q who and we will be with you again soon you know the drill Please stay tuned.
You have been listening to a fan production for Dream Realm Enterprises. This is a not-for-profit program.